Hey guys, uh, we'll do, um, question number four on the screencast for our quiz review. And this one is a um, slightly different problem because we get this weird uh, 2.5 G's that we have to deal with. Um, the roller coaster rider, 500 newtons, sitting in the uh, roller coaster car, obviously traveling at 18 meters per second, we've got to find the radius and the normal force of this car. Okay, um, so some of the things we have, 500 newtons, I see that newtons, that's telling me that, that is the weight of the passenger, not the mass, because it's in newtons, so 500 kilograms, sorry, 500 newtons. Um, I can find the mass by taking 500 over 9.8 which is 51.02 kilograms. That's a five. 51.02 kilograms. Um, 18 meters per second. So meters per second, that tells me that has to be a speed, which has to be the tangential velocity. 18 meters per second. And really, that's it. Uh, centripetal acceleration, 2.5 g's. Well, 2.5 g's is 1 g equals 9.8 meters per second squared. So 2 g's, or 2.5 g's, would just be 2.5 times 9.8, which is our centripetal acceleration is 24.5 meters per second squared. Okay, um, <clears throat> let's see, we have to find the normal force, we have to find R. If we're trying to find normal force, it's at the bottom of the hill. So our radius is up here, um, car, so we have some forces. Our centripetal force has to act up, our force of gravity going down, our normal force has to be up as well. So centripetal force, it's going to be a positive number, is going to equal our um, normal force. Oh, no, it's our force of gravity minus our normal force. All the forces uh, acting away minus all the forces acting towards. Um, so we have... Not enough information for that. Uh, we know the FG, obviously, but we don't know the normal force, and we don't yet know centripetal force, but we do, because the centripetal force, uh, just write it up here, is mass times centripetal acceleration. And I know the mass is 51.02, and I know the centripetal acceleration is 24.5. So I can do 51.02 times 24.5 equals my FG, is um, 500 newtons minus my normal force and um, sorry I just got caught up on thought um, so my normal force I know has to be bigger than my force of gravity and so there's there's a problem going on here and that's because my centripetal force and my normal force are in the same direction. So this has to carry a negative, or the easier way is to make it positive. Um, so be basically, my centripetal force is up, so that's why it should be positive. My normal force is up, that's why it should be positive. My force of gravity is down, negative. All right, so that'll help. Um, sorry, I was just back. I got off track for a second. 51.02 times 24.5 gives us uh, basically 1250. It's 12, 1249.99. Uh, We're just going to go with 1250. 1250 newtons equals minus 500 newtons plus the normal force. Um, so my normal force is going to be 1750 newtons. Okay. So I solved my normal force. 
To find the radius, um, the easiest thing to do is, now that I know my centripetal force, 1250 newtons, I know that centripetal force is mvt squared over r. I'm trying to find r. So I have um, centripetal force of 1250 equals 51.02 times um, vt, which is 18. Uh, 18 point, just 18 meters per second. That's going to be squared over r. To solve this, um, it's a little tricky. You got to multiply first up by r on both sides because it's in the denominator. And then you'd have to divide by the 1250. So I'm just running out of room on that side. So it's going to be. Um, R equals 51.02 times 18 squared, which is 16,530. 16,530.48 over the 1250. And hopefully, I'm not running onto my head right now. 16,530.48 um, over 1250 gives me a radius of 13.22 meters. 13.22 meters. All right, so I have my normal force, 1750 newtons, and my radius, 13.22 meters. Um, the trick for this problem is sort of twofold. The first thing is the 2.5 g's. Um, that tells us an acceleration. One g is 9.8 meters per second squared. So to find what the actual number is, got to multiply by whatever that is, 2.5 times 9.8. The next thing is looking at this diagram and figuring out directions and the net forces. Uh, my centripetal force is up, which means that my normal force is up. And since those two are up, that's positives, setting up our equation. Our FG is down, so it has to be negative. Um, so those have to be like that because our centripetal force and normal force, in this case, are in the same direction. Uh, you've got to be careful with just what direction things are going. Up is positive, down is negative. Um, using that information, we were able to find two things. First, our normal force, but also our centripetal force we were able to find through just the set generic m times ac. We had both of those. Using that, once we have our centripetal force, we can take that information with one of the other equations for the centripetal force and solve for whatever our unknown is. In this case, it was r, so we had to solve for r. And we got something that is reasonable, 13 meters. Um, makes sense. We didn't get something like 0.1 meters or 5,000 meters. Uh, those just don't really make sense. And hopefully, you're able to do this. Um, tomorrow in class, what you'll get is a similar problem. It'll be slightly different, maybe 3.5 Gs and a 700 person, a 700 Newton roller coaster rider. You know, something similar, some different numbers. Maybe I'm at, I'll ask you for an extra piece of information, like the angular speed or something like that. Um, but same type of problem that you are responsible for. So um, that's it, and see you tomorrow or Wednesday, depending on what class you're in.